Finally, we had something to cheer about. After weeks of house of pain, stocks took off. It felt like happy days are back and it's easy money once again. But there are some out there who believe we are not out of the woods and this is mostly a relief rally. A recession might be in the making. Let's break this down. Hey guys, welcome to Think Finance. Hope you're doing fantastic. My name is Raj and this channel is all about building long-term wealth. After a painful start to the year and watching our portfolios burn week after week, we had the best week for 2022. Finally, I was able to enjoy my Friday beer. This week alone, my portfolio erupted 13% and options flew 50%. By the way, link to my portfolio in the description. This reminded us the importance of staying invested and not just panic selling. Because if you were out, you missed out on one of the best weeks for your portfolio. Two big headlines that spooked the market. Interest rates and the tragic war between Ukraine and Russia. Bulls can argue that market has warmed up to the idea of rising interest rates and a ceasefire is probably around the corner. Bear story? Inflation, rising prices for everything led by commodity, supply chain issues, war escalation, and recession fears. In this video, I want to talk about recession, the inverted yield curve that we keep hearing about and potential impact to stocks. Some of you have pinged me asking if bottom in stocks is in. If you follow this channel, you know I don't fish for bottoms. Instead, I'm a dip buyer. I will buy dips at regular intervals as markets go down significantly. I have my own strategies I use as stocks correct or enter a bear market. I have a bunch of videos around this topic, but here's a good video to start with where I talk about my strategies I use to manage my portfolio in volatile times. I'm also experimenting with leaps contracts. So far, it's working great. Allows me to get similar exposure to stocks, but with less money. I am running out of cash. Here's a video where I talk about it. I will do a follow-up video sometime in the future sharing my experience and overall performance of my leap options I'm currently holding. Coming back to the question, have we bottomed? I'm in the camp that you can never know when the bottom is in. So I end up buying dips. I've been tweeting about this. Personally, I think lows from 224 is a legit level and a strong resistance. We have hit this level twice and bounced. If we ever see that level again, this is where I will double down. So it seems 224 is where we bottomed for now, but I'd like for S&P and NASDAQ to cross the 50-day and 200-day for confirmation before calling it all clear. Let's talk recession. If you look at economic business cycle, a recession is a period between peak and the trough or when the economy is contracting. The NABAR or National Bureau of Economic Research defines recession as a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy lasting more than a few months. Economists look at a number of indicators to define recession. For example, decline in GDP for two consecutive quarters, rise in unemployment, reduction in personal income, and so forth. Of these, the real GDP is considered the most important indicator. When GDP growth turns negative or contracts, it could signal a recession. There's another one that is considered to provide early warning and can actually forecast a recession, the yield curve. Let's talk about it. The government issues short and long-term interest paying bonds for investors to invest in. These are usually a safe bet since we are dealing with the government. Short-term bonds offer less yield compared to long-term bonds. Long-term bonds come with risks 
and uncertainties for which investors expect a premium and that is reflected in a higher yield. Just like stocks, demand drives the value of bond. Higher demand will drive the value of bond up, thereby reducing the yield. And lower demand reduces the value of the bond but drives the yield up. A yield curve is just a curved line that plots yield or interest rates for bonds across different maturity dates. Economists look at three different scenarios. Number one, a normal curve, which means investor confidence or sentiment is high. Investors are convinced that future economic growth will be strong. Number two, a flattening curve, when the yields are same across the board. It shows that some investors expect slowdown. It could also mean that economic indicators are sending mixed messages and signaling uncertainty in the economy. Number three, final one, is when the yield curve inverts. This is when the long-term yield fall below the short-term yield. Investor sentiment is low and investors expect economic downturn in the short term. Right now, we are somewhere between two and three, trending towards three. Now, why do economists go crazy when the curve inverts? Historically, inversion of yield curve has preceded many recessions in the US. Here's a chart to prove the point. It uses the spread between the yield of 10-year and two-year bonds to determine if the yield curve is inverted. Whenever the spread, which is the blue line, falls below zero, the curve inverts. The gray bars indicate US recession. As you can see, whenever the curve inverted, within a year, US entered a recession. Because of this correlation, the yield curve is often seen as a way to predict recessions. We're getting really close to zero. Some believe we will get there and we should be ready for a recession. Whether we get there or no, time will tell. So how do stocks respond to recessions? Let's talk economics. Inflation means higher cost to buy and borrow. This will lead to reduction in business and consumer spending. This will trigger a slowdown in economic condition. All this lead to reduction in corporate profits and stock prices fall. Let's look at some past recessions. On average, the stock market has fallen 32% from peak to trough heading into a recession. During COVID, S&P dropped 34%. On average, pullbacks lasted 381 days. Bottom line, if we hit a recession, you should expect stocks to continue to decline sharply for several months. The playbook says during a recession, you want to have exposure to consumer staples, utilities, commodities, defense, and healthcare. Of course, there's a lot of value and defensive plays here. In my playbook, I think you should also be in quality tech especially when it is at a discount. Does that mean you go out there and make changes tomorrow? No, all I'm saying is that be smart about investing. Don't just drop all your money in consumer discretionary names or hyper growth stocks just because they've dropped 50 to 70% from the highs. There's a reason why some of these are trading at these levels. Given the macroeconomic factors and geopolitical events, in 2022, it makes sense to stay invested, but also be smart. Expecting easy money is being naive. Having said that, I do believe we'll be in a much better shape this time next year. Things to watch for before you make crazy moves. Europe escalation, commodity prices, strength of the consumer, and the dreaded yield curve. Thanks for watching. Thoughts, comments? Until next time, peace.